What's up, Future Fam? Sorry for the delay. For today's show, we are back live, and today is just one of many streams. So first up, we're going to be talking to Shima Hassanlu. Did I say that right, Shima? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we'll get it right eventually. <laughs> we're going to be talking about business development. Business development and Shima's our very special guest. We do have some history together in that we've worked together in a galaxy far, far away and not too long ago. But in case you guys want to know, here's the quick crib sheet on who Shima is. She's an executive producer and she recently founded her own company called Crimson and Cognac, September 2018, so it's still freshly minted here, guys. And she's worked at a bunch of different companies, including Fellow, Los York, 72 and Sunny, iArtist, Dynamite, Laser Beam, of course, Blind Picture Mill. And she was, for a period of time, an adjunct professor at Otis College of Art and Design. We also share that in common. She's in the branding and design space. She produces things for events, films, TV, and social. Shima, welcome to the show! Yeah! Thank you! Yeah. 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 All right! Hey, come to her, man! Yeah, Woo. that's good. That's, good. that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. I, I want this PR team everywhere I go. Thank you very much. I'd love to have this intro everywhere. Thank you. Tell me how much I'm going to have to pay to make that happen. <laughs> we can be your hype man, 100%. <laughs> You're looking lovely, rocking the hat, the hair. Everything's amazing. I only have one small complaint before we start, which is we need to update your headshot game. Wow. Considering you work with so many media professionals. Okay, so Shima, I know you have a deck. We want to talk about business development, biz dev for short. And you have a very unique philosophy about biz dev. I think you call it be of service. And I'm really leaning into this now. So can you tell us the five ways to be of service? Yes. Um, well, I'm, I'm really uh, happy to be here. And I'm happy that you allowed me to speak on something that I'm really passionate about, which is business development. And I think everything that has been the the uniting principle of my crazy career here in Colorado and in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It all comes back to producing and business development there and to me they're they're very interconnected. And today I just wanted to focus on what I see business development as and as someone that has been actually credited with that title director of business development I found that most people get really confused as to what business development actually is. And it seems to be this really strange, like Harvard Business Review, like term that gets thrown out a lot. It's like this big buzzword. Everyone wants to have it, but no one really understands what the heck it actually is. Okay. So, so what is it? So uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell us what it is. I, I, I wanted to like break it down, make it something like really simple and palatable for anyone to understand it because... We have a large audience here of everyone from creatives to business people, young people, experienced people. We've got all different styles of people in all different hats. And I think this is something that I wanted to do something that everyone could start to understand and start to employ. So okay. I wanted to focus on five ways to be of service. And um, first of all, the word service is something that everyone has a different connotation of and mm. the, the meaning of that. When I think of service, it first came from the term servant leadership, where, you know, which I'm sure you're very familiar with, um, you know, where the leader is working as the servant to their team in, in order to uh, unite them and push them forward and really be the guiding light and having everyone around them emulate what they're doing. I'm looking at service right now in terms of uh, the world of hospitality. I'm a huge cocktail geek. My number one hobby is going to a bar, having cocktails, and having conversations with strangers and seeing where that goes. So my notion of service comes from the world of hospitality, really fine hospitality. We're talking like five-star dining and above. And uh, here we go. So business development, like I said, is this term that it's just loaded in like a lot of, I don't know, a lot of like Wall Street Journal type things like it's business and it's important and you got to have a business degree and you got to be in marketing and you got to do sales and it seems to be synonymous with sales and nothing drives me more crazy than people focusing on sales with business development because business development is a much larger term that encompasses a whole world of things to focus on and sales is just one tiny little portion. So what I wanted to focus on here is business development is very similar to personal development. And when you look at it as personal development, it's like, okay, well, now I can actually focus on this because it has something to do with me and not something outside of me. It's not client-driven. It's not client-based. It's not external-based. It's about me. 
personal development. Make sense? So far, so good. All I right. want to say hello to the 200 people watching live on YouTube. Several people are being are able to watch the live stream for the first time. So, guys, welcome. And with that, keep going. That's Shima. exciting. Yeah. I like the number 200. She's 200. a lucky number. Yeah. All right. So, I want to start with this. Um, <laughs> many years ago, I um, had a friend that was an architect, and he was telling me that his principle of business and business development was that people buy people. Now, I think this might be a cliche term. It might be something that you've heard long ago. But I wanted to bring this up because I feel like today we live in this space that's pretty transactional where we look at things like, I give you this, you give me that. I'm buying this service or good, therefore I have this expectation of this. And we're constantly trying to front like, I've got the best game on the block. I've got this. I've got that. But really what it all comes down to in the creative space, it doesn't matter just what's on your reel. It doesn't matter like who you've worked with in your client roster. Like we kind of all have legit clients. Like if you work in the space of motion graphics or a creative space, all your clients are going to be pretty big and globally known. That's just usually the way it's usually the way it is. If you're working in the space of like anything that have to do with like broadcast, right? Mm hmm. So I'm, I'm just here to say that people actually buy people, which means it matters what sort of energy that I bring to the table. And there's empowerment in that. Mm. Okay, so you can't rely on the work as being your differentiator. And you're saying at the end of the day, the work gets you in the door, but your personality, your energy is the thing that gets them to decide, I want to work with you? I think so. I okay. mean, uh, when I'm vetting people on who to work with in my business on where I'm going to put my money, that energy is going to be huge. Not only, of course, they're going to have to be vetted. They're going to have to be legit. They're going to have to have all their bells and whistles and all that. But at the end of the day, I'm going to work with someone that I actually like, mm -hmm. someone that I actually want to work with. And that's it. It's, it's basic. Do I like this person? Do I feel comfortable talking to this person? Does this person have empathy? I need that in my life. Okay, so I have a question based on that then. If I want to be desired and liked, what what is it that I need to do? What what are traits that I need to exhibit <laughs> for an introvert? Well, if you're ever a student in my class at Otis, mm -hmm. I uh, I teach a keynote on this, not Google Slides keynote back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't I can't say the term here because it's like inappropriate, and uh, it's probably a reason wait, why. Wait, hold on a second. Uh, <laughs> It's okay for you to teach a bunch of college students, but you can't say. I don't know. On you, you told me that there's like you know I shouldn't like say bad words, but um. well, I also don't want to cage the Shima tigress. <laughs> and, you know, let, let her free. So at the I, risk, okay, I'm gonna say this now. Yeah. If you guys have young Your children, uh, there may be some inappropriate language or strong language. There and having go. said that, now please, Shima, now, do you. Now that, now that you it's all you. like hyped yes. up, uh, right. it comes down to this very very simple principle: is okay. don't be a dick. You could say that don't be a jerk. It doesn't <laughs> have know. the same cadence to it, man. I, I understand. Uh, okay, so don't be a jerk. I got it. Go on. I don't know. I studied advertising and copywriting sure, in college, sure. and you know, like those two words are not synonymous. Mm, mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay, so <laughs> how do I avoid not being a jerk? Um, it's sort of like the golden rule. I mean, maybe uh, you you guys all know what the golden rule is like treat other people the way you would want to be treated. It's really basics. Like this is seriously getting back to basics. I think when it comes to business development, we get like all high and mighty up there. Like we're getting into things like who's my client list, who's my CRM, who's my head of sales, how, what is my communication strategy, what is my positioning strategy, what is my marketing. You know, we're doing all this stuff. And that's great. And that's all part of it. And I don't, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be doing that. But I'm saying, like, let's get to the foundation. Let's get to the core of, like, what really matters. Because at the end of the day, if you don't know, like, what you stand for as a company or as an individual, I mean, what are you doing? Like, you're just, I don't know, throwing spaghetti at the wall, seeing what, what hits, what works. Like, and I just see that with a lot of companies, like they're just like, well, we're VFX, we're photo real, mm -hmm. or we do really great illustration, or we're great in editorial. But like, so what? Everyone does that. Like, what are, what are you really about? Like, what's your real driving force here? Like, what is your intention? Okay, so you're saying people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So now we're going to get into purpose and intention. So 
how do you craft this? So if I'm your client and let's just assume you're taking clients and you want to help us grow our business, doing business development, doing personal development, what do I have to do? Well, how do I have to talk about myself? Can you give me an example either in the past or we can role play or do something like that? Can you make it more concrete for us? Yeah, I like that. Okay. So what do you want to do? Um, when it comes to like uh, the word intention, mm -hmm. um, for me, this is a really, really big thing. And in all the, the studies, all the, all the work that I've done, like with workshops, books, this, that, like hiring business coaches, consultants, whatever, it all comes down to intention. Like, what is your intention? For me, as an individual, I have three words as like my North Star. And they are passionate, legit, inspiring. And how I make this concrete for me is I have a recurring alarm that's set up on my iPhone a few times a day and it'll just randomly pop up and it says these three words, passionate, legit, inspiring. And it's sort of a reminder of like, hey Shima, what are you doing? Are you embodying these three traits? Because if not, this is your time to realign and refocus and like get your head back in the game. And I've been doing this for years and I have this, you know, on sticky notes, I have this on sketch notes, I have this like on my mirror at home, I've got it on my refrigerator, I've got it all over the place. Because it's a reminder of like, this is what I want, this is who I want to be. And so when I'm showing up to deal with a client or to deal with students or to deal with friends or family, even a first date, like I want to embody these three words, passionate, legit, inspiring. Okay, one of those words is not a typical word, legit. What does legit mean? <laughs> uh, I guess I'm showing my, my age here because legit is like, you know, MC Hammer era. <laughs> too legit. You, you do a couple moves for us? Yeah, it's like too, <laughs> too legit, legit. Too quit. Too legit, too quit. Okay, there you go. There's the move. Wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. Uh, the young kids in the other room are like, oh, oh, what is she talking Jesus. about? Who's MC Hammer? <laughs> Who is MC Hammer? Yeah. Did you just YouTube it? Well, um, let's, let's talk about legit. Like, what does that mean? Uh, legit cool. means, uh, like, for real. Like, real deal, holy field. Like, the real thing. Like, not fronting, not playing. Like, you're actually bringing the goods to the game. Like, um, if you're going to go, like, with basketball, like, Allen Iverson is a legit player. Like, that guy embodies everything you need to be an NBA All-Star. Right? It's a legitimacy. Right. The word legit comes from legitimacy, I, I'm guessing. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. So so that, that that's what it is. It's just it's just real and it's not faking it like that whole fake it till you make it like. OK, that's so 80s. Oh, okay, like, okay. Let's get rid of that. So our audience is, has grown by 80. We're at 280 people now. So thank you. So you must be saying something they're leaning into. So <laughs> I'll help uh, keep this conversation on track, I hope. But OK, legit is short for legitimate or legitimacy. But what if you're young and new and entering the field or you didn't go to the design school or whatever, how can you be legit? Ooh, 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 such a good, such a good segue. By the way, we're going to get into that with... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I like all your shoulder rolls and your head fakes. I feel like we're like uh, on the basketball f uh, f uh, court or something here. You're like juking left and right. I'm like, where's, where's she even going? She going to the deck or she going to answer know, the question? It's, it's hard to stay in place because you guys. Uh, you've got like a lot of energy. Yes, you um, do. All right, so even if you're young and even if you don't have the experience, um, you know, we've all been there. And even if you're super experienced, it doesn't mean you know everything. Like, the more experienced that you are, I'm sure you can attest to this, the more you realize how much you don't actually know. It, but you just have the experience to know how to get that information and how, to, and how to play a bigger game. So the number one thing is preparation. It's as simple as that. Just be prepared. I can't tell you, like how often I, I, I was uh, brought in for a meeting with a really large global production company that, you know, they they have offices in, I don't know, 15 cities around the world. Wow. That's yeah, a big it's, company. it's pretty, it's pretty big. Like for, yeah. for the, the, the state of things right now, there aren't that many companies like on that level. And, you know, I think their, their work is great. Um, RSA. I, I probably talked to them for about half an hour before they realized that I had nothing to do with live action producing. And no one bothered to look into my background to see like, oh, Shima's actually, her focus has been on post-production for mm -hmm. over 15 years, not live action. And it was just really interesting to me that you can 
be so busy and so caught up and so on your game and like I'm the executive producer and I'm doing all this but like no one is actually doing the work of preparing and doing the research and figuring out what's going on so as someone without much experience like maybe a student there's no reason why you can't actually do the work and actually do the research and actually see what's happened in the past and learn and grow it's all it takes just preparation and work boom <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, if you have another question on that, just make sure you mention it in the comments. Uh, we, we are doing this live. Abdul Beck is saying, this lady is so cool. <laughs> you're that, so cool. Who's Abdul? You know, you, you, you're like, hey, <laughs> this is on a dating channel. Relax. Everybody relax. Calm down, everybody. I, I want to say something, though. I just want to say you, my phone is going off with my passionate, legit, inspiring. There you go. It's just reminding you to be what at this point? It's reminding me, inspiring. passionate, legit, inspiring, and I could snooze it or I could stop it. <laughs> Keep, don't, don't stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a crazy random thought right now. You, you got a, like a Madonna vibe going on right now. I'm Ooh. trying to place yeah. which album, which period, but I, I don't. My Madonna history, it's not very good. You, um, you're definitely rocking some I'm Madonna vibes. I'm thinking like La Isla Bonita era, <laughs> which is like the first vinyl I had. And I think I got it from McDonald's. Okay, look. Like in the, the 80s. Our, our fans on the internet are like, what's an MC Hammer? <laughs> Oh Who's Evander Holyfield, the real deal? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Madonna? <laughs> There's a lot of references here, you guys. Okay, so we've been in the game for a little bit. That's why she's legit. Too legit. Oh, oh, please don't quit. God. Okay, let's keep going. <sighs> all right. I don't feel old at all. No, you don't. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, so, yeah, just being of preparation. And, like, once again, I want to reiterate that this is all about being of service. Like, the more work that you do or I do as an individual and in showing up and doing the research and being prepared is actually being of service to the people around you that you are working with and collaborating with and doing work for. And the, the people that you aspire to work with, you doing the preparation now is being of service to everyone else around you. It's not selfish. It's actually being of service. It's what you want to do. The same thing that a bartender does at a really nice cocktail bar when they're preparing their whole setup with the fresh herbs, the fresh citrus, the tins, the shakers, the glassware, the hand cut ice, and they're preparing for their guests to sit in front of them at their bar, that preparation is part of being of service. And once again, that comes from hospitality. So, Somebody has spent a lot of time at bars. The way that you just went down that. Ask her. Ask her what her favorite drink is. Ooh. What is your favorite drink? I, we gotta know. Whoa, my favorite. My well, it's it's a seasonal thing. It depends on like where I'm at in life. <laughs> oh my god. It changes. Okay. It changes right, now you know, Mark. Uh, Ricky. Now you know. She's legit <laughs> Ricky, on the drinks. Ricky wants to know. Ricky, yeah. We could discuss that. So point. okay, what's, what what is your oh, at the bar? I'm sure. What is your drink of this season right now? Uh, well, it's a variation on a classic, which is usually an Italian aperitif. Which which is daytime, the Negroni, I usually have it without gin, I sub in Mezcal. Mezcal and Negroni, that's my drink, <laughs> that's my jam, I have it all over Los Angeles. Okay, okay, hold on. For those of us that don't drink it, yeah, never like stepped in a bar. <laughs> hey, easy it. what's a Negroni? Oh my God. Well, a Negroni is this drink that uh, has been served in Italy for generations. It's equal parts gin, Campari, sweet vermouth. So you've got your strong, which is the gin. You've got your sweet vermouth, which is the sweet. And you've got your bitter component, which is Campari. And it's red and it's beautiful. You guys remember all those like posters back in the day from Campari? Like, uh, oh, yeah, I remember that. You know, the, the companies that like lithograph printing and all that and full color printing was actually uh, commissioned first by Spirit Ads back in the day. The first company being Fernet Branca out of Italy, like you know, nearly, I don't know, 150 years ago or something. Of Campari course. actually followed suit with that later on. So the Negroni is a drink that you have prior to get having your meal. It's an aperitif. It opens up the appetite, right? And so it's usually made with gin. I like to sub in mezcal because it's agave, and agave is in the spirit family, the only upper of a spirit family. Everything else is a downer. Mm. I like the uppers because mm. I like to keep it positive. All right. There well, we go. Well, so, so Ricky, thank, thanks for dropping the spirit <laughs> knowledge on us and the printing history and all that Whoa. stuff. Let me tell you my beverage of choice. It is a refreshingly delightful bottle of hot water with a little bit of honey because that's the upper. It helps to 
coat and smooth the throat for a live broadcast such as the one we're on. So Where did it originate, that. Chris? Where did it originate? What's this originated history? from the faucet, and it uh, included some honey from the grocery store, probably Ralph's. Uh, that's what we're rocking today. But ask me what my next season drink is, and I'll tell you. <laughs> Chris, we got to up your water game. You yes. got to up your yeah. hydration. There's like, Cheers. you know, so much alkaline water out there, and then you got like the, the Manuka honey, and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. All that. I'm sure you know all of that. Okay, let's get back to growing our business. <laughs> okay. We yeah. took a, a detour a through the, the spirit country, and let's bring it back to BizDev. Okay, keep going, please. All right. Um, well, this is, this is a perfect one. The, the next thing is passion. Which is, you know, one of my one of my three words of my intention is, you know, how many times have you gone into a meeting or you're like with a client and like they're just so over everything and they're just like, oh, whatever, it's Monday, let's just do this. Uh, who wants to work with these fools? Like I don't. Like I, the, it's another day we're alive. Like yes, it's great. Like let's bring the passion, let's bring the joy, like let's bring the energy, let's get excited, like. It's good. You could have a whole lot of things going on in your life that are going wrong, but when you want to show up for someone and you want to work with people and you're in a collaborative environment, especially with creative people, because we're so, so sensitive. We're so sensitive to each other's energies. We need to bring the passion. And, you know, this is a great thing about going into a bar. Like, you could be having the world's worst day. You could have a death in the family. You could be dumped. You could uh, have your students tell you that you're a hack teacher. Not that that's ever happened to no, you. No, not, <laughs> no. Present company excluded, of but, course. But you can go into a bar. Yes. And, you know, there's someone there, the bartender, and they're going to bring passion to their game, and they're going to make you feel a whole lot better. And it's like, well, why can't we use that ourselves in our day-to-day -day with our work and the people that we interact with. It, it doesn't cost anything. And it, in fact, it just changes the entire dynamic. Okay. Boom. Okay. <laughs> That's how she speaks, man. Yeah, I got nothing else to add to that. <laughs> what else you got? Let's see. Um, once again, just want to reiterate, that is being of service. Like, I'm just going to keep bringing that home. Be of service. Your energy, your passion, your excitement is a way to be of service. You know, it doesn't cost anything. You don't have to hire an expert to do it. You don't have to bring in someone to teach you how to do it. It's just you, baby. That That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Let's give her Nailed two snaps it. and a clap. <laughs> Guys, I just, I just really like it in this space. Like, yes, you do like the space. Uh, You've I'm been gonna, remarking gonna, about this. I'm going to do this at home or create this at WeWork or something. Yeah, you like, could totally cool. do it. Cool. Okay. Well, there's a question that's coming in for Sir Waste a Lot. <laughs> Sir Waste a Lot. <laughs> Sir Waste a Lot is asking, what's your take on work life balance? How much time and energy do you put into your work versus your siestas and playtime? Siesta. Um, well, I question. think only people in Barcelona take siesta. So, mm -hmm. like, whatever. That's so not American. Like, let's be ridiculous. <laughs> like, come on. I mean, let's be serious here. Like, we don't do siestas here. Uh, my people, my, my family in Iran, I'm Persian. They take a lot of siestas anytime they eat like a bunch of rice, which is pretty much in every meal. Right. They have to take a nap. Um, I I come from uh, the school of hustling. I don't believe in siestas. That might be good for some people. My siesta is probably having a cocktail at the bar. That's my <laughs> downtime. That's my realign time. So um, I'm going to look at it like this. The work-life balance is... It's different for everyone, and you can't take someone else's prescription. Like, if I had a day in the life of Chris Doe, it might really stress me out, but it might be really great for him. And if someone had a day in the life of Shima Haslam, it might be super stressful for them, but it works for me. Um, or it might be really boring for people. It just You just have to dive in and figure out, like, self-awareness is key in figuring out what you need to be on your A game, to be high performance. And you have to figure out, like, What's your intention? What do you want out of life? And you have to experiment and realign and figure out what works for you. Mm. Okay. You're getting some love from our chat. Karen Hart is saying, this woman is amazing. Three hearts. And then somebody else, Parsa Ageo. Um, I know I butchered that. It says, love from Iran. Wow. Love from Iran. That's my people. That's a, <laughs> yeah, represent. The, the future is in Iran? We're yeah, everywhere. We're everywhere, man. We're literally That's, everywhere. There's a lot of UK people right now. Dude, that, There's people from all over the place. That is... um. I'm humbled. That's that's um that's amazing. It's three three thirty in India or yeah, three thirty in India I think. Three thirty in India. And they and they're awake watching, so yeah. 
Okay. So they're they're gonna we're gonna give you time to for you guys to formulate your question and ask Miss Shima. And then we're gonna try and tackle as many of your questions as possible. Let's keep it on the subject of business development or maybe how you can be of service. Okay? I like that. Yeah. So guys, fire away the questions. Ricky, you have a couple of questions ready for us? Yeah. Okay. So let's a do lot it. a lot of people are remarking on her energy. Yes. So maybe ask her how does she create good relationships with people? What are her core foundations to making a good connection with somebody for a lot of these people are introverts okay she's an extrovert. perfect perfect you are clearly clearly an extrovert shima i already know this about you from the many times i've spent with you so if you're an introvert and and i like your energy and i like the vibe you're throwing out how do i learn from miss shima how do i do this if i'm an introvert easy <laughs> <laughs> you hire me baby you know, what is the answer how do you do it i'm constantly trying to teach people how not to hire me um okay. but like no one wants to listen to this um <laughs> what a problem to have <laughs> some money and she'll get us some clients anyway that's fine you can throw money your yes yes way. yes so how do you do uh, it number one is just be of service like it really all comes down to being of service like if you think about like you know i have I've taught a lot of students in, you know, art school and uh, which are traditionally people that are more introvert, um, sensitive to uh, people's energies, like empathetic. And this question comes up a lot. Like, I can't go out there and do this. I'm not comfortable with this. Like, OK, I get it. Like, I wasn't comfortable going out and meeting strangers either. Like, I've been trained from the time of being a child to do this through a lot of people. There's been a lot of training to get to this point. It has not always been fun. But it's helped me get to where I want to be. So the number one principle is to be of service. And if I'm going to be of service as an introvert, I could take myself out of the equation and make it about the other person. So if I'm in a networking event, and I hate this term networking, but if I'm in, a, if I'm in some sort of event or like I'm at like an art show or I'm at a conference mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I want to talk to someone and I'm all, I'm all up in my head because I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do. Um, it's making it about me, but really what we should be doing is making it about the other person and then you're making it about the other person by being of service. So how can I be of service? We'll ask questions. What is this person there to do? Why are they there? How do they know of this? What's their story? You make it about someone else being of service, like, you know, come prepared, ask questions, do the research. When you're not making it about you, when you're not the star and someone else is the star, like... You get to be David Letterman and you get to interview whoever you just met. And chances are that person's going to leave that interaction thinking, oh my God, that was the greatest conversation I've had. And meanwhile, you haven't done anything except for ask them about themselves and they feel so heard and so listened to that you're providing that presence for them and you didn't have to do anything. You let them do the work. You see, it's delegating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's very good. Let's do this, Shima. Yes. Let's pretend we're at a party. Oops, 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 <laughs> things are going right. Bum, we got bum, some bum, music. Bum, 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 there you go. <laughs> and we're here. And I'm like some weird introvert. I and mean, when I say I, I mean you. You're the introvert. <laughs> and there, there's a group, a small group of people. How do you break into that group? Like, there's two or three that's people. That's a great question. There's not often that you see the lone wolf, and the lone wolf is a lot easier to approach because you can just say, "Hey, how's it?" Go? Whatever it is that you say. So let's say there's two people and they're talking about something. How do how do you approach them? What's your opening line? And give us the really tactical tips on how to break into a group, and so that we can ask those kinds of questions, so we can interview them. And for those people, the, the David Letterman reference, maybe it's Jimmy Fallon. We're just trying to update our references here a little bit. <laughs> Shima, give us some tips. Pretend we're at the party. I'm just sitting here like, oh yeah, Jimmy, this is an amazing piece of art, isn't it? And then you do your thing. Okay, so we're we're I'm, I'm the introvert. I'm not. Yeah, the, you're I'm not the lone You can't wolf. be like the crazy Shima wolf tigress okay. that you are. First of all, yeah. Let's be as awkward as possible. Okay. Let's be. Just awkward. pretend like you're me. You got it. Let's, mm -hmm. just, let's just break in. Break let's in. Just How do we need to do this? Really stupid, and bring all the attention on me, and just just say something like, "Hey guys, I'm here." What's up? <laughs> <laughs> How is that an introvert gonna be able to do that? <laughs> this is the introvert. Oh, oh, wait, uh, wait, wait. Um, <laughs> Uh, where's the bathroom? Good. That's pretty oh good, Chris. Goodness. It seems like no, I'm practice. just being me right now. <laughs> I'm not even pretending. Okay, okay, okay. Like, I can be like, hey guys, I'm here. That's not that's not what you want to do. It's getting hot. Like here. number one, like let's not be awkward. Yeah, let's, let's not, not let's not be awkward. Um, I think I actually did a a keynote on this like with 
Oh, you like Some, Keynote, huh? I like Keynote. Keynote, Keynote, it. Keynote's my thing. I mean, Google Slides is my thing now, but <laughs> Keynote used to be my thing. You're I've, cheating I've been, on I've Keynote. I've been seeing other people. <laughs> so it could be as simple as like breaking in and giving a compliment to a person. Like, oh, oh that's ooh, a, I like that. That's a that's a gorgeous hat that you Thank have. Thank you. Like, what what's the story with that hat? Why why ooh, why does it say bait? Nice. Bait. Okay. Yeah, what's yeah, the story? yeah. I don't know. I just like topography, <laughs> and so. This is what I'm about. You know, oh, are you a designer? Baby. Typography? You know, how'd you know that? I don't know. I don't know anyone that knows the word typography except for designers. <laughs> well, you, how observant of you. My gosh. Yeah. I'm you want to really go for a drink? Smart, yeah. Like, are you thinking about Negroni? <laughs> it's one of my faves. It's an upper, you know, it's not a downer. Kindred. kindred it, it opens experience. up the appetite. Oh, well, I fantastic. Like I like that. So I like how specific you are. I like that hat. Tell me about the hat. Tell me the story. And then as, as soon as I give you anything to work with, you're you're like, I'm like putty in your hands now. You're just manipulating me, right? Boom. 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 But I'm not trying to manipulate. No, I don't mean it I'm like not, that. I'm not I mean, trying to just... manipulate. I'm really actually, and, and it's like, don't fake it. Yes. Like, actually. Legit. Actually give a shit about it. Ooh, bing. There's number two. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, no, that's okay. that was not necessary. That's a foul right there. Keep going. Actually really come at it with passion. There that's you go. a better way to say it. Come at it with passion. Come at it with passion. Like, actually, um, don't fake it. Like, people can read energy. Like, people are really nervous when they're fake. Like, Actually, look at things and and ask about things you're actually interested in. Be, okay. Be be. You don't have to be interesting. Just be interested. No, oh, we just had this conversation this morning. Excellent. That's John Maxwell, I believe. I don't know who that is. Yes. But I'm <laughs> <act like> <laughs> yeah. Of course. Of course. I know who it is. Right. <laughs> you could totally do that. Wow. Okay. You know what I like what you just said there is there's a level of self-awareness and being comfortable in your own skin, which goes against the whole introversion thing, mm -hmm. which you have, obviously, where you can be like, hey, guys, it's me. Or I really like your hat. I'm sorry if I'm being weird, but that's just who I am. Mm -hmm. And you just own it. And I like that. That's truly legit being authentic. I like that. Okay. I got another question for you. Here. Do you this is from James Collins. And yes, guys, I am reading the comments. I don't know why you think I'm offshoring the person reading the comments here. So it's being split between Ricky and myself. First of all, Minty Frills from Sweden. How you doing? Okay, James Collins asks, do you have a go-to method for lifting the energy of a meeting? How do you do that? Yeah, I, I've got one. Um, it's not mine. It's uh, from my favorite guy in the in the space of high performance, and that's Brendan Burchard, who I've been a student of his for I don't know how many years, at least four or five years, and I've been coached by his business coaches for a while. And he has a method of whenever he sees a doorway mm -hmm. before an event or a conference or something, or like seeing his wife at the end of the day, when he sees that doorway, that's his mental cue to go back to his intention, like, who do I want to be? How do I want to show up right now? And that doorway is the portal to, like, that change. It's like, boom, trigger, done, and that's it. So when I'm going into an event, and I go to a lot of events, you know, in the name of business development and trying to network and trying to meet future clients, I don't want to be there all the time. You, you think I want to hang out at the Montage Beverly Hills with a bunch of like old dudes and like <laughs> somehow like, I think yes. I but don't. I, I just I, I, I don't know. I, I do it. I do it as I do as like this is. Yes. There might be a diamond in the rough here. There might be someone here that's in alignment with the way I'm thinking, but mm. they don't need to know that I've been hustling for six years on trying to get like this one client over here. What they don't need to know my story. They don't need to know the trials I've been through. They just need to see that like I'm stoked to be there. And it's not only my job to be, spoke, be stoked, it's like my honor. Like, and I'm gonna bring up everyone around me because I have that capability. And why not? Because it's gonna make things better for everyone involved. Okay. I don't even know what you just said because I'm, I'm hot and bothered <laughs> by some of the comments in here. Okay, Karen Hart is saying, if you're reading the comments, get someone to bring a makeup wipe. I'm like, is my makeup okay? Is my makeup okay? I don't know. What is? Is there something going on, you guys? Yeah, let's look at my teeth. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't, there it, might be a smear on her bottom left. Bottom left. Right oh, there. Shit. Of your lip. Of your lip? Next time I'm bringing my makeup Okay, you know what? Andrew. Turn your camera phone on and then just check yourself before you wreck yourself. Oh my God. Cut, cut to me while she's doing this, guys. <laughs> Put it on the person who doesn't need makeup. <laughs> okay, whatever. All right. Let me read some more comments while Shima's putting on her face. I don't know what this is, but I think there's a woman looking out for you here in Karen Hart. I didn't notice anything myself, but, you know, I'm not it's staring my, at it. It's my crazy-ass lipstick, huh? Is it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's very vibrant. 
You guys, I don't have a makeup artist here, so it is it is what it is. So just, I can just, only do Chris's is, makeup, guys. Yes, I'm, it's I'm a low-budget show. I'm There's only one makeup Chris. artist, and, and they're taking care of me right yeah. now, so Sorry. that's the way it works, yeah. The doorway portal thing, hmm. I, I, I do you know how to respond to that, so I'm going to hold on to that for a second. I thought you said that when you're at an event, you do it in the name of... I thought you were going to say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, woo, getting biblical on us all of a sudden. You know what? Right. You, you, you go to your North Star, man, whatever works for you. I don't even know what my North Star is. Well, I'm just trying to be real. We can work on that in the next chat. Yeah, we can. Trying to be legit. All right, Ricky, what's a good question? Um, okay, so a lot of people are asking, since you're trying to bring in good vibes all the time, how do you recognize bad vibes in a client, and what do you do if you see bad vibes? Ooh, good one. Okay, okay, that's a good question. So the, the question is, if you're all about good vibes and we can sense that from you, when you see somebody, uh, how, do you, how do you recognize the bad vibes, and what do you do with that? <laughs> yes? What a great question. Um, I, I, <laughs> okay, I'm actually I'm actually told a lot by people that like I need a lot of training in recognizing bad vibes because I'm so adept at seeing the good in people. Yes. Like it, my automatic thing is like I can see the potential in people and I can see them at their highest good and their highest like positivity. Unlike most people, I think this is why I like working with uh, millennials and students so much because I, uh, I just I just see. I just see people at their at their greatest and whether yes. they're showing it or not that's my that's my secret skill that I have so trying to figure out uh who doesn't have that like I don't like spending a lot of time there but I know intuitively that if I pay attention to my intuition the more and more that I actually pay attention to that it gets stronger so I know at least in terms of like content like I'm very rarely like watching content that's like super dramatic or like crimes or mysteries or like oh, horror stuff. I stay away from all of that because I'm really sensitive to that sort of stuff. So I watch a lot of things like comedies and like goofball shows that don't take any sort of thought and don't bring my energy down. So I really limit uh, media content, media consumption that is low vibes. When it comes to people, that's uh, an extra, an extra layer. Um, I've recently learned to like hire people that are better at reading people. So when I need to go in a situation and I need to like have some space and I need someone to represent me in terms like of maybe like a legal thing or uh, a business affairs thing, I can hire someone that reads people a little bit more, uh, skill skillfully than me because I know where my shortcomings are. Mm. I, I totally get the answer, though, really, because you're a positive vibes, per, vibes person, so you're very optimistic. And so you need to surround yourself with people, things, art that that feed into the energy and you don't have time for the negativity. And you're not searching for people to find their negative parts. You're, you're kind of just by your nature, you can't see it. So that's your blind spot, probably. And while you probably need somebody around you to like, you know, it's, I mean, it's not good vibes. Let's let's move on. Right. That and I, is I love that. That's, I mean, that's it. Like you, you read it super correct. I don't have anything more to say on that. That's, yes. that's it. And it's, it's hard. Somebody who's optimistic, positive, who's got really good energy, that energy can't be polluted by all the garbage. So you got to just steer clear from it. Now, I happen to watch the crime, the murder, the mystery, the science fiction, the blowing things up. Not so much the comedy. So we'll have to figure out what's wrong with me later. Okay. <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to Candace Rose who's watching this show and she said she's only been watching our channel for two months and she's from the state of Georgia and she's already increased her rates to $5,000 for a logo. Woo! A little clappage. A little clappage. Yes. Yeah, Very girl, good, get it. Boss Woo! babe. Get it. Get hashtag. It, hashtag get it. Mm, hashtag you get got it. Girl. Okay. That's fantastic. Dude, I haven't seen a, a, a logo rate for 5K I think since 2005. What does that mean? Uh, that was what I was charging in 2005, but now that I see designers doing logos, it's like half that, or they're going on a Fiverr for like 25 bucks. Yes, so it's good to kind of bring it back up. So, girl, whatever you're doing, uh, I know what keep, she's doing. Keep keep doing it, and then up your rate. <laughs> like next one, make it 10k, man. Boom. Yeah, there you go. Boom. Okay, so I want to see if I can make a love connection on this show today. <laughs> so I've, I've I love the name of your company. It Ooh, reflects you. I love that. Yeah, Crimson that and a, Cognac. That means a lot. Can Chris, I just say you that? have really amazing taste. So well, thank you thank very you. much. <laughs> so Crimson and Cognac, you need an amazing logo 
and website to go with it. Oh, and sadly, rah, rah, you don't have one just yet. It's so easy. I'm thinking oh we have God. amazing designers in our community. <laughs> Perhaps you guys can figure out some kind of barter where someone can design you amazing logo and identity system that reflects all your positive energy and your love for the Whoa. spirits and design you an awesome landing page. Whoa. Maybe, maybe even just spring for it and get a good headshot going, will you? <laughs> Please? Maybe. Please, can we do that? And then maybe <laughs> you can help them. Maybe you can help them align their personal development so that they're better at business development. Maybe? Oh, I Guys. love it. I, I love it. Okay, so how do people get in touch with you before you get stocked by 300 dudes? How do um, they reach we, out to you? Should we put up? Oh, I should I, I have it. No, I have it. So you oh, can just tell think, me and then I, I think, cut um, to that graphic. You know, I'm really, I'm a lot slower with email than with text, but I don't think it's appropriate to share my phone number. No, no, don't share. No, no, definitely not. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> not live on the show. Well, trust me, you don't want to do that. <laughs> no, I mean, Gary Vaynerchuk, like you could text him. And I, yeah, I but he has 45 love. phones, so don't worry about that. So you guys can find her at Crimson Cognac and... Obviously, I don't drink, so I had a hard time spelling it. It's like Cognac. <laughs> well, how do you spell that? So did I spell that right? Cognac? That is correct. Okay. And then yeah. it's Miss underscore Shima on yep. Instagram yep. and Crimson underscore Cognac yep. uh, for the uh, the business account, which I'm not even sure what you're doing. But that's Shima and her crazy cool hair, her lioness hair. And it took me a lot of time last night to paint your hair. You know that? I'm so Can sorry. You, I could have given you a image. Different... It's a lovely picture. It's I just wish still, it were high res. It's a still from an IG video. Yeah, I can tell. But, you know, uh, yes. I'm, I'm just trying to be of service to give something that's like on brand. <laughs> you know, that's like future forward. I'm looking into the future. So, guys, this is a business opportunity <laughs> for those that have the gumption and the initiative to reach out to Miss Shima and see if you guys can do something together. I know that some out th someone out there can design you the most beautiful maybe spirit inspired like all that ornate beauty the, oh the labels and the, the i don't know if you're into gold or silver but just a little bit of that black the black gold. label mm. Mm. i love it i love somebody it. somebody I, do this. I love i love the the biz dev that's taking place for me because i'm so busy like <laughs> trying to help out like other people with stuff that's yes. like oh we got to work on our own brand what is that like We'll do that later yes yes yeah yes okay so guys we only have a few more minutes here with mishima so i want to open it up to any questions we are definitely most real like live right now so guys i know it's been a little while but we're going to give you more live content than you can handle the next couple of days because yeah, i seriously. think we have like five live streams even today even today we'll have two more today so you guys sit tight ask me questions we'll be here all night we'll be partying with you all night if you can consider this a party shima i'm just curious though it's been a little while since you and I have worked together. Yes, sir. Okay, so you've gone your way, we've gone our way, and now we've completely transformed our company. And I think some of your Which students have seen what we've done. Totally. I'm just curious, do we want us to have a little dialogue about anything? Anything that's on your mind? Any questions you want to ask me about whatever? And then we can get into it. Otherwise, we'll take another question from our audience. Well, I just, um, I love that question. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's been since uh, I was working with you at Blind as a producer, I think in 2012 last. Ooh, it's been um, a while. So that's, a, that's, that's been a while. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I love that this is sort of, um, I look at it as like a testament to um, relationships and maintaining relationships and levels of respect between peers. Because um, a lot of times, like, you can leave a company and like never look backwards and never reconnect and it's really easy to do in los angeles because like we're so busy doing our own thing yeah and there's been so much change that has happened with blind as a company with the future of school yes. like mm -hmm. chris doe as like you know as your own brand and doing all that and i just love that um we've been able to like stay in touch and to just see what's going on and uh reconnect and do this because i I wish that the future was happening while I was here producing because mm. I, I would have been like, I, you find another producer. I'm doing all this. Right, right. You know, I'd be like, yes. I'm doing this 175 percent like all the time. <laughs> and I'd, pro I, I'd probably get in trouble for that and get fired. But, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's, that, 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 I, I love I love what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And I've been sharing it with my students and my students like love it. And some of my students actually came here when Kyle Cooper came to. Oh, oh right, to right. Speak. You brought a whole posse with you that brought time. A whole posse. Yes. And like what it's been. Um, it's been like really mm -hmm. amazing to like just like full circle you know with careers and you know yeah. worlds just like colliding and i i just think it's so rad like and this space is so rad and i'm so thrilled yeah and I, I freaking love it thank you so much Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Yes. let's go old school <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go our senior hall raise the roof <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Raise the roof, yo. <laughs> oh, you could go Arsenio Hall, but I can't go Letterman. Well, no, <laughs> because I'm I'm grooving in your vibe. I'm swimming in your yeah, coolness. In the I would thing. never pull an Arsenio Hall Arsenio. reference like that, right? <laughs> but go, go, you, go to you've gone in there. Living Color. Do do your kids know that? Because. If you don't know about Living Color, you haven't watched content. I'm sorry. <laughs> Weigh in. Okay, I have no idea right. what has happened to our show. Know. I've enjoyed the conversation, but... Is that English? I okay. just know I don't have access to my uh, my PDF anymore yes. to, to control that. <laughs> You're done. To, so we're, okay. we're, we're done with BizDev, I guess. I, I want to ask you just one question, though. <laughs> I want to ask you this question before we go anywhere, which is if you put on your teacher's hat right now, what kind of question or would they want to ask you and then answer it? What would my students want to ask yes, me? Yes, that, that you already haven't spoken about before. Because I always think, you know, I wish somebody would ask this question because then I can answer it. But oftentimes they keep asking me the same old question. Should I specialize? Should I do this? You know, whatever. So is there a question that they should have asked you that they haven't and to tap into that? I wish I, you know, I've, I've had this with some students like... Uh, I, I had one student that was like given to me like as a problem student and like no one else could deal with him Hiroshima you take him and so I just had conversations like I wish my students would have conversations and tell me like what they want to do like I I just wish they would just say like hey this is what I want to do and have the guts to like tell me like this is what I want can you help me do this and that's what I really tried to show up for with my students like I had a student that wanted to be a director, and I was like, well, cool. We're not going to teach you how to do that here um, at all. The, the program's not built that way. No program's really built that way. Maybe if you go to, like, a, a film school program. But I went to film school, and they didn't teach anything about that. Right, thank you. So, <laughs> well uh, done, well done. So, <laughs> um, I, think, I think if people would just uh, be able to, like, uh, whatever's important to them, to actually have the guts to just ask someone. It doesn't even matter what the question is. Just have the guts to, like, try and ask. And if you don't get the right... Uh, response from that person try it again because uh, we're all here to help people we're all connected to each other and like there's nothing better than like asking someone a question to empower them and show like mm. their expertise mm -hmm. so they allow you're you're allowing someone to give their expertise to you by asking them so you're saying that you want them to have the courage and the clarity and self-awareness to know what it is they want and then the courage to go and say can you help me on my journey that's what you want them to say yeah yeah, yeah, because yeah, that's because you know, as Shoot. teachers, that's what we're here for. As a director of business development, I'm here to help you push your business forward. Okay, you know, as a producer, I'm here to help ensure that the client is happy, mm. the production company is happy, right? You know, the, the client up top is happy. Like, we're just trying to go. This is slide number five, by the way, that I don't have access to. <laughs> but slide number five is going for a win win win, right? We just want a win win win, like where everyone's happy, and if we were working in that paradigm instead of that paradigm. You know that triangle like uh, cheap, good, fast? Yes. Oh, that's such a piece of garbage. Like we need to get rid of that and it needs to be like win, win, win. Like what can we do right now to make sure that everyone is winning? Like and if we're not all winning, we need to figure out how to use our creative design brain collective mm -hmm. and figure out how to get there. Mm -hmm. And if we were actually doing that, then we're being of service to ourselves, to our team, to the clients and their clients, and like then everyone's happy. Okay, so I'm gonna throw up another hashtag. Hashtag winning. <laughs> win, win, win. <laughs> Little Charlie Sheen there. Hashtag winning. Win, win, win. It sounds like a Vietnamese phone directory. It sounds win, like a hip hop win, track. Tron I think win. No, okay, David win. Okay, win, win, win. Right. I love that. Super awesome, Ricky. Do we have one last question that we should entertain, or should we wrap this thing up? Um, I got one question. All right. Bring it's, it home, baby. Uh, everybody's, you know, we're marking on how good she is at her job. How yes. does she stand out in such a crowded space here in L.A.? Okay. Everyone's remarking about how good you are at your job. So how do you stand out in such a crowded market as Los Angeles? How do you stand out? How do you, how do Miss Shima stand out? <laughs> I think it's um, it's a relationship game. And by the way, thank you for the acknowledgement. I appreciate that, you guys. I don't know how you know that I'm good at my job, but thanks. We just uh, know. <laughs> we just know. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's a matter of like, you know, anywhere that I've worked. I remember like when working here, like as a producer, like I didn't own Blind. I wasn't the executive producer. I wasn't the owner. I wasn't a co-founder. But anytime I'm producing a job, I'm going to act like I am the owner and I'm going to bring that level of game to every job. So whether I'm a production coordinator, whether I'm a PA, 
whether I'm an art director, whether I'm uh, an animator, like any of these jobs, like you come in and act like you own it. Because if you actually are coming in as a company owner every time, and by the way, as freelancers, you are the owner, you are the CEO of your own brand. I'm sure you've done a million podcasts on, on this subject. Um, if you just come in with ownership, then you're not going to make decisions that make you look bad or anyone else look bad. So taking ownership, having integrity, and showing up every day, that's all it is. Because at the end of the day, all you have, especially in a city like Los Angeles, is reputation. This is a reputation game. Boom. Boom. <laughs> all right. That's how Ms. Shima lives her three core principles. That was a super passionate answer. You can tell she's legit. Legit. And... <laughs> She's got this super positive energy that is contagious, infectious, and it's very inspiring. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for coming by the studio, Shima. We'd Thank love you. to have you come by next time. Maybe yes. some of the people who are watching this episode later on on a replay or a cut down, you guys might formulate some questions for me, and then I can ask Mr. Shima and see if she's interested. So, you guys, it's dependent on you to ask some really good questions, okay? Let us know what you think in the section below. You guys know what to do. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to this video. And I want to just send out a heartfelt thank you to everybody that makes this possible, to our sustaining members, the donuts, the donation. See you guys later. See you next time. Woo!